Introducing the Turtle Grand Plan and Turtle Booster idea. So far the trike hasn't been all that great. After this test ride, which was somewhat successful, I was having more problems, mostly with the chains. I could solve those, but the more I tested and rode the trike, the more I realized I just really didn't love it. So then what? I had spent a couple days fixing the trike after the first ride to town and thought things were looking pretty good. I was loaded up for the second ride to town, and while a bit nervous, I was more optimistic. Then again, about 100 yards into the trail, and the chain was falling off already. Okay, fine. Back to the ranch, mess around. Well, never mind. Just loaded up the black bike with the trailer and I was off. Riding the black bike, right after riding the trike with the full load of batteries and the trailer and the tools was the first time I had an actual practical load comparison between the two. The bicycle was just so much easier to ride. Sure, obviously the bicycle was lighter, but more than that, it was more nimble, even pulling the trailer. I was trying to get used to the trike, but I never really liked it. So there I was, riding to town, pedaling the black bike, into a headwind for 15 miles. I realized I was riding probably about as fast as I could have gone on the trike anyway. Parts of the road, you can't go much faster, it's just too rough. But I wanted to show you some ideas I had while riding. First idea, what I'll be calling the turtle booster idea. Think of it like a booster rocket, it's an add-on. It'll be a lot like those one-wheel trailers, but probably just big enough for the motorcycle wheel, the motor controller, the motor, and probably the battery. The idea of Turtle Booster is that it can just attach to the back of the bike. I'm hoping to just use the bicycle wheel axle as the attach point, but I'm not sure if that'll work yet, though. If I don't need a boost, I don't have to attach it. If I do need a boost, it's a simple thing to connect and then I just need to run some wires up to the bicycle for the throttle, the brake lever, safety switches, etc. If needed, the trailer could then attach to the back of the booster. One of the things that got me thinking about this, the bicycle already works. It has a chain and shifting and brakes all there. Most of those things were giving me problems on the trike. I've already started working on this and have taken the trike apart again. To reuse some of those parts. Most of what I am doing doesn't seem to make sense in the context of what you see on the videos. If I'm only going to town to get packages once a week, this is way too much work, right? Yeah, no kidding. My ultimate goal from the beginning was to make a travel bike, something I could hit the road on for long distance travel. A few years back, I had the motorcycle trip to Alaska. I learned a lot on that trip. I liked the idea. I liked the experience of riding out in the open on the motorcycle. The problem was hauling all the gear. Obviously, I was pretty overloaded. But even if I cut half of the gear, I was still tent camping, plus I had the digital camera, the video cameras, tools, etc. The next time I go, I want to do it on a pedal bike, on Turtle. Turtle will be the recumbent bike, and I still want to pull a little teardrop trailer. On this ride, while I was thinking about all my ideas again, I realized an important detail I guess I had overlooked before. I can ride on any road in America, and it will be smoother than the 10 miles of gravel I ride on here getting to town. I've been trying to build the ultimate off-road electric bike, but I only need that for getting packages. What I build for out here on the ranch isn't going to be very practical when I get on my epic road trip. Up until now, I've been building the ranch bike with the long-range camping bike in mind. Now I'm seeing those as two separate projects, which makes it a lot simpler. Some of the tech will work on both, the batteries and maybe even the motor, but I probably won't need the big knobby tires. I don't expect to go way off-road with a camping bike. Also, obviously, weight is a huge issue. I'm building with steel now because that's what I have. Building strong for out here makes sense. Taking the time to look at the design again, with what I've learned so far has let me have the freedom to start over in a more informed way. So I'm going to scrap the trike. It was good for learning, but not well suited to what I really needed. I learned a lot building it though, and parts of it might get used on other projects. The rest, 
Well, we'll just have to wait and see. After being out here for a while and not having enough water, I was really concerned a lot of times if I was going to run out. And that's a lot like the membership program. If you don't have enough income, everything gets really difficult. And that's why it's important when I launched this membership program that I got the word out right away and get people to check it out and every little bit helps. I mean, I'm collecting rainwater in trash cans, right? Every drop, every dollar out here makes a difference. So I really appreciate you checking out what we got here. And all of the money is going towards helping me keep the ranch going and uh, bringing content to you to show you what it's really like living out here. I'm not smart enough to be fake, so whatever's happening is what you guys get to see every day and every week out here. So I'm out here full time now, and normally you don't get to see the rain. So enjoy it when you get it. All right, thanks a lot. Stay tuned. Check us out. Bye for now. I was an hour faster today pedaling without the electric than I was on the test ride because I, I kept breaking stuff. And I, then I had to drag the whole thing home again. You know, I've, I've, I already know I can pedal. I've been doing that for a year. I'm going to keep the profanities out of this just in case I decide to release it. Oh, crap. Four hours and 56 minutes. It was roughly three hours going to town today because of the headwind and about two hours coming back. I was going pretty good on the on the tailwind. Funny thing about a tailwind on a bicycle when you're really working it, as an old guy trying trying to work it, you're riding fast, you're pedaling, trying to take advantage of the tailwind, so you're still putting in good effort, but instead of going five miles an hour, you're going 15 downwind, so that, that's great. You're making up some time, you're making up for how long it took going to town. You're still sweating because you're pedaling hard, plus you pull on the cargo on the trailer. And you're overheating because you're keeping up to the wind, and so you don't get that wind blowing on you to cool you off. And so you're just, just sweat running in your eyes, dying. So I had the epiphany today. Put a couple days in this last week, fixing the trike. Had a few problems I just really couldn't get my head around how to solve. And this is, it's, it's very frustrating for me as a former mechanic and as an aircraft mechanic on military jets and helicopters, I got a pretty good mental picture or a mental condition or something like that that says, I know how this works. This is, I know how to make this work. You know, linkages and things like attention are just drop dead easy. But what I got to remember is my ability to weld something straight is pretty bad. I don't have like a simple thing like a welding table or a flat assembly table that I can check things on. So things are constantly twisted and crooked and a good craftsman could make it work. But in the beginning when you're not a good craftsman, having things level to start with would be helpful. So that part's kind of kind of sucks. So I jump on the bike, the trike. The last couple times I've done test rides, I don't think my batteries were fully charged. Because of the way the lithium batteries are, if you, if, you, if you charge them up to 13 volts, that's pretty good. A fully charged pack in float, I started writing the numbers down because I was never getting them right. The What I'm calling the 12 volt pack should charge up to cutoff at 14.4. The BMS in there will stop it from going higher and then it'll hold it at float at 13.8. So I've been leaving a lot of capacity unused because I'm not pushing them that high. So this time I had these suckers charged up. They were ready to go. I was going to just coast uphill both ways. It was going to be great. I get like a hundred yards and the chain comes off on the, on the electric side this time. So something is slowly drifting out of alignment there, right? The roller skate wheels that I have to hold the chain 
they're not really wide enough so the chain is rolling off of them so I don't have enough adjustment where I can fine tune that I grabbed a pipe wrench and cranked on it and that seemed to help a little bit I got even less distance though second time this is after I'm like trying to really because I know it's going to be windy it's it's going to just suck today it was it's blowing it's like forecast 20 mile an hour winds visibility is crap right now there is so much dust in the air you can't really see the mountains downrange it's just no can't see them so I'm like okay I know I've got big stuff already there it's been there a few days I've got more big stuff coming if I don't go today the second wave of big heavy stuff is going to be there so I have to go today I'm looking at this thing and I'm like it's just not working all right fine push it back grab the black bike pedal again right in the process I took all the batteries off because the I mean the batteries are mounted to the trike right now and then the tools are on the trailer so I just take the trike out put the bike in that gets rid of all the batteries by the time I left and came back and left and came back twice switched bikes it was 8 o'clock instead of 7 o'clock I was in probably 15 mile an hour headwind all the way to town and I remember thinking this just really sucks I really started thinking about it the blue bike or you know the trike was never my goal I don't really like it. it's not easy to ride it's overly heavy because what I have is steel because I made it to be modular I have not actually modified the blue bike at all everything that is on there is just bolted on that was the goal yes I could get the wheels a little bit straighter and then the chains would probably stay on there I could make a better chain roller guide tensioner so at first I was thinking okay if I one of the things that because this was early prototype I didn't want to just start cutting my chain all right I could cut the chain shorter and I could totally re reimagine that could make it a whole lot easier on myself <clears throat> I was resisting that because I don't want to end up later doing something different and wishing I could make a longer chain that's why I would ran the double double guides to use up some of the extra chain I had so I didn't have to cut it when I got to the pedaling side I did cut that one because it was a lot longer I bought two chains that I didn't know how big I was gonna need them so I just got them extra big I was trying to kind of keep things symmetrical okay let me list the list the things that are wrong that I'd like to if if I was gonna go forward with it I'd probably change if I put the electric motor anywhere besides where it is on that vertical plane I kick it so the motor what I could do though if I decide to cut the chain I could put the motor underneath and put it really close to the wheel the jack shaft system is just completely whacked right now I think I'm on third or fourth version of that with two or three iterations in each one the idea seems ridiculously simple it has just been the biggest pain in the butt partially because I'm having a hard time getting things really well aligned uh, again that shaft has to be there so I don't kick it it's really close to my foot now in the back of my mind I'm thinking ahead because what I thought was going to happen is that whole trike back assembly was going to get grafted onto the back of turtle so I was trying to get things to work there so I'm still kind of looking at all the things that I did that didn't work and a few just outright mistakes and some things that were close but I would still have to redo them to get them better so okay right now it just doesn't work the jack shaft is bent when I was using the keyed shaft it wasn't long enough so I could go get a longer shaft I don't have the tooling to make keyed collar which I can actually buy some and then weld them on so a key way would solve my problem one of the problems so if I had a long keyed shaft go through and then have keyed adapters for the sprocket and through the bearings that part seemed like it was working well um, I mean considering I got this thing to town and back that's 32 miles you know it's not a complete failure looking at it now it's amazing I got it as far as I did it is ridiculously heavy I really noticed when I jumped on the black bike with the same trailer how much easier it was pedaling 
I was ex I was willing to accept the extra weight for the reliability because I was making it so heavy it should have been stronger, so it shouldn't break. Okay, so I'm I'm hanging on to that idea, but at the same time it is just so hard to pedal. Another thing that I had to experience to really understand, and I think I've had people talk about this. When I had the original turtle, I had a solid shaft, a solid axle, and I never, never once got to pedal that. I didn't get that far. But I did notice turning with the wheels locked to each other, it's really hard to turn. And then later when I took that axle and put it on one of the trailers, in fact that's what's on the trailer now, that trailer you cannot turn it because it has no differential and the wheels were locked to the axle. It just wants to go straight. It's, most of the ride is straight so that's fine. But you get into town on the asphalt and you go around that 190 degree corner and that sucker does not want to turn. It's like, nope. Okay. Which makes me wonder how go-karts work. Because most go-karts are solid rear axles. One thing I learned from the blue bike, or the trike, or whatever we want to call it, because I was only pedaling one side, I could turn... Like, so if, if you know, pedaling is on the left side, electric is on the right side. I specifically didn't want to mix the two because that gets extra complicated having trying to mix two drives together and still be able to freewheel and get them to coast and stuff like that. Okay, so pedaling on the left side, if I'm turning to the right, I was just screwing around out here and I looked back and I realized that I had my inner wheel pivoting it just sat there and I turned an arc around it all right so I could turn around in a parking spot pretty much then when I hook the trailer on that's on one of the clips I realized that I was turning too tight and I was jackknifing the trailer it was getting getting caught so having the two sides separated did make a lot of a lot of sense so I think I was on the right track there so I had a few ideas while I was riding because you're riding for three hours with not much to do. I locked on to the idea of making the recumbent four wheels. I started copying what they call a tad, tadpole trike. So two wheels in the front, one in the back for that. But then I started seeing the quads and because I, I've got the totes and I was going to be hauling my groceries and stuff, so I needed a lot of cargo space. Some of the quad recumbents I saw were pretty much copying the design of the tadpole trikes. They didn't really re redesign them. They just changed the back. So you had two wheels instead of one. So that gives you a little bit more room for cargo. I felt like they didn't even take advantage of, of how they set it up for what I would have wanted. So and this is the thing is I've never seen one I liked that I would just... You know, if I had the money, I still wouldn't want to go buy one because it wouldn't do what I need. That's, you know, a lot of it is, you know, everybody's got these ideas and I live this life. I pretty much know how big of a box I need to be able to haul. I know how much effort it takes me to pedal. So if an electric is going to be helping me, it's got to be able to do, let's just say 35 or 40 miles and pulling me, so we'll say 200 pounds, tools, water, snacks, and 50 pounds of groceries. Okay, that's why I went with a 750 watt motor. That's one horsepower. If I'm gonna do it with electric, it, it's gotta be better than what I can do by myself. Because you're adding weight and adding complexity. And this is one of the things that's really messing with me right now is the size of the battery pack I had on the heavy trike, I think would probably be enough to get the to town and back. I had trouble on the on the first and only test ride to town. Pedaling didn't work, so then I couldn't assist the, the electrics as much as I planned on. I was having trouble with that. The batteries, I don't think, performed as well as they should have, and that's probably because they weren't fully charged. Okay, so if I had all of that working, what I had was probably pretty close to what I needed. 
Stuff I've seen on the internet that's anywhere close to that is about $4,000. Anything less, I would be breaking. You know, because I'm breaking spokes on regular bicycle wheels, so it's got to be more than regular bicycle wheel parts. Cargo bikes are about $1,500, and they're still a two-wheel bicycle. So then I would still have to pull a trailer behind it because I can't get everything... You know, the size of my Amazon boxes, well, you know, you've seen the totes, and the boxes are bigger than the totes. You know, so the trailer had to be big enough to hold the box, otherwise you can't get home. Okay, so that's kind of where we're at. What I realized, though, I mean, obviously, if I had an electric assist on the bicycle, pulling the trailer, that would be fine. So I started to kind of just just kind of noodling around in my head a little bit. One of the things I realized riding the black bike, because actually the black bike has at least front suspension, and it's got softer tires. I got pretty nice wide tires, not super wide, but they're, they're wider. And it rode nice. And then I noticed how much easier it was to ride compared to the blue trike because of the added weight. And all of the shifting worked because it's all where it's supposed to be, and I haven't mutilated it yet. And the brakes worked, because they're where they're supposed to be. But the fact of the matter is, I've got a bike that already works. So I kind of just started going back in my head to all the ideas I had rejected, you know, in the last year. So the first thing I realized, and um, a couple people have mentioned this, and... Uh, I don't typically like it, but it, there's a lot of merit to it. So, so I'm kind of going back and I'm thinking about, okay, if I look at what I don't like and decide if it's something I could live with for a while, it might be something I could just go ahead and use it in a new way. So one idea is there is a line of bicycles I've seen, or trailers, I should say. It's a one-wheel trailer. so. The idea is for riding on trails. You have just a flat platform and a single wheel in the back, and that attaches to the axle, the rear wheel axle, or thereabouts. You have a bracket or something. Okay, so when you lean, that leans with you. Uh, it's just a single wheel. And I've seen them with, like, you know, like the totes that I have. I've seen people put that tote right on one of these. Okay. I don't know if I would want to put a whole big box of groceries, but so if we just kind of start with that, if I took my motorcycle wheel and motor and built a little one wheel trailer that had enough room for its batteries, its motor controller, the motor and the wheel, the chain, and my tools. So I've got that black tote I always take with me. It's got random spare parts, tools, spare. Um, tire tubes, right? That kind of stuff. And all of my little boxes and packages and mail I can put in there and then it's not getting loose everywhere. So it makes sense to have it. So since I have it, I just throw all the extra tools in there. Okay. So what I'm thinking, make a one wheel electric booster that clips onto the back of my black bike. The black bike, everything works. Brakes, steering, shifting, decent tires, okay. So then I add one wheel to the back as a booster. That gets me up the hills and makes it easier to ride, okay. And then I can still hook my cargo trailer onto the back of the booster. Now, if I was doing this in the city, this probably wouldn't fly. You know, because it's long. It would be about two bikes long. You know, so that would be kind of a kind of gnarly, but out here it'd be fine. It might be a little bit tricky going around some of the corners, but the front, you know, the bicycle part is only one wheel wide, so that would still be fine. And the trailer, I already know the trailer can go around all of the bushes, but I made the trail to fit the trailer, or vice versa. Okay. So I'm like, okay. That would be a lot less work to make that. I think then it would be to even try to fix what I've got. 
I'm not sure yet. I'm going to think about it for a couple of days because I'm, I'm not doing nothing tomorrow. I'm tired. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. If I just say, all right, we'll make a little booster. It'll be self-contained practically. I'll just have a throttle cable going up, right? So that I can, and that'll just be, I'll just run a wire down and have a disconnect on it. That'll be easy. So everything will be self-contained and then I'll have the booster. Okay. Then I can still pull the cargo trailer because the cargo trailer is well sized for pretty much everything I need. Okay. So we'd have the batteries and the tools on the booster. Cargo trailer would be empty. Because of the resistance of the motor, if I wasn't on throttle, I did notice I was spinning the pedal side. That great big motorcycle wheel in the soft sand, I was not getting enough weight on the only wheel that was driving, the pedal wheel. And then the electric wheel was dragging because it wasn't turning. And then my little skinny front tire was sinking in. And I had times out here that I'm on the level in fairly soft sand and it's all I can do to keep forward motion because I'm spinning and digging in. Okay. So distributing my weight between one wheel that's not driving, one wheel that is driving, and the third wheel that's digging into the sand, I couldn't get enough pressure on that wheel to, to get traction. Okay. So if I went to single wheel in line, like the one wheel trailer, the weight of the motor, the weight of the batteries would be close to that wheel, so I would not have that weight on the bicycle. Uh, I would shift the weight back as much as I can towards that big wheel, and one of the things I'm thinking is that should keep me from breaking spokes on the bicycle wheels because I'm keeping the weight off of them. Then the, bi the trailer can push weight down on the motorcycle wheel. That should give me a lot more traction. Okay, so I'm going to, this is going to be a thing that I'm going to go into it um, gently. I've got, I mean, that's one of the neat things about how I'm building this anyway, is it's pretty easy to take things apart. I can mock something up and test it. One idea was to put the electric drive on the trailer instead of doing it to the bicycle. And I was really worried about if I'm going slow, and if I, say if I accidentally hit the throttle, I hit a bump and I hit the throttle, and that trailer pushes me sideways. Okay. That's exactly what you don't want. You know, that's, that's like, you know, one of the a truck driver's worst nightmares is jackknifing. Because once it goes, you're screwed. You know, that trailer just pushes you right around. Okay. I've had that happen on the bicycle a few times where, you know, because I don't have trailer brakes. I'd be cruising along and I'd see some random treasure on the road. Like, oh my God, there's a, you know, 12 millimeter socket. Slam on the brakes, right? And I would be almost putting my feet down. And all of a sudden, I'd realize that the trailer was pushing me sideways. So I jackknifed it a couple times because I slammed on the brakes on the bike so hard. 50 or 60 pounds of cargo behind me slid me right around, right? I was almost stopped when it happened. So it, it wasn't like I crashed. But I'm like, man, that is something to think about, right? So, you know, down the line, maybe I'll be thinking some way of trailer brakes, you know. So that's kind of that. Um, I've alluded to my master plan a few times. Ideally, what I want is turtle, the recumbent bicycle, and some kind of a little, like a tent trailer that I can pull behind it. Solar panels lots of batteries, a little canopy over me, probably solar panels. So I'd have solar panels over me, solar panels on the trailer. If I could cruise at 15 miles an hour continuously on solar panels, power, and pedal, can you think of a better way to travel? I mean, probably all of you would say, yeah, you know, but for me, that's awesome. You know, I'm, I love just, you know, going down the road, if I'm not killing myself, it's just fun pedaling down the road. Uh, the day I sold my truck, I rode from El Paso to here. It would have been right around 100 miles, I think. Close enough, right? 
ended up I ran out of tires and legs. I've been riding for, well, I sold the truck in the afternoon. I rode all through the night, which actually worked out good because it was a lot cooler. You know, and then my back was cramping up. And it was just a mess. I wasn't really in shape for it. But the first first 60 miles, I was loving it. You know, this was great. And then I got kind of tiresome after that. Well, if I could go 40 or 50 miles in a day, pull off and set up camp just somewhere random, right? Anyway, so one of the one of the reasons I was hanging on to the design that I was, the, the recumbent especially, I'm, I want to test the recumbent on this and then take the rec what I learn and maybe rebuild it a bit and then I'll be ready to go for the road trip, okay? Well, the other thing I realized today after just getting pounded, it started to make sense, you know, I was like, kind of just like, everything I'm trying to build has to survive out here. I can ride 99% of the earth is better than this road that I live on, right? I've ridden motorcycles on the Alaska Highway, the Dempster Highway, Top of the World Highway. I covered in a few days a thousand miles of gravel road up in the Arctic Circle area in a rainstorm. The bike never did get clean after that. Most of my gear still has dirt from that ride. It's a badge of honor. It, it was awful and I loved it. But my point is, I didn't have near the trouble on that road that I have here, right? So I can go pretty much further than I'll ever want to go into the boondocks. If I can get through the first 10 miles, the rest of the ride will be easy, right? So I was kind of looking at it and I'm like, if I build something to survive out here, it's not what I want to take on the road, right? That made it easier, kind of. So then I'm like, okay, so if I do the little turtle booster pack just for going to get mail, what I learned from that could be useful later on, but I'm starting to think that, well, a lot of my assumptions were wrong or not practical for what I need. This gives me a really, really good chance to stop and kind of pull back and look at it a little bit. I'm still going to keep working on it, but I just realized that I could do a complete pivot turn here and totally change my design ideas. Most of what I've done isn't really wasted. I mean, that's the neat thing about metal. I can cut that stuff apart and reuse it for something else. We got modular ideas, mix and match. If something doesn't work, change it. Okay, two things I do know. One, I'm tired. Two, I do want the recumbent still. My arms just ache from bouncing down that road. I was an hour faster today pedaling without the electric than I was on the test ride because I, I kept breaking stuff. And I, then I had to drag the whole thing home again. You know, I've, I already know I can pedal. I've been doing that for a year. So if I can tweak it a little bit, make it work just a little bit better in a different way, that's the next goal. Yeah, I'm not giving up on electric. I think I am done with the trike. I never really liked it. Eventually I'll still get the recumbent, but that's not as much of a priority because I'm realizing that the recumbent may not be a good fit for out here. So I might wait on that. You know, in two or three years from now, who knows? You know, once I have a TIG welder and can weld aluminum or chromoly like bicycles are supposed to be made of. Yeah, a lot of things could change. But for now, I'm tired. I think I'll take the rest of the day off.